internet welcome back to my channel today as you can see i have another journal flip through video for you guys this is the jibun techyo journals they're in two different sizes i think there's like a couple other like inserts you can get i'm just going to focus on like the main journal section this is the i think this is the more regular size and then you have like a mini version here and i bought both of them because i wanted to compare the difference and just see which one resonated with me a little bit more i think two years ago i did a flip through of like a regular size but it had like a life insert and a few other things. So if you want to check that out, I will link it down below. These journals are released by a company called Kokuyo. I don't think they produce any pens, but they do produce quite a few notebooks that I have loved and used to death. I've gone through both these journals and have come to realize that they are identical in terms of the content. Um, the only difference is everything in here is squished a little bit more. So like, um, the format inside is all like grid and so the actual dimensions of the grid like little squares are smaller than here so at first i thought maybe you get like three space three lines to write here and maybe only two for this one but no they've just literally miniaturized it a lot more for here so for the sake of this video i'm just going to step through this particular one only because it's bigger so you can actually see everything easier anyways so let's put this aside so i'm not going to flip through this one you can just imagine that everything you see here is already going to be in this one and really it will come down to do you prefer something smaller or larger? You can kind of see the size of this one. And I'll just pull this one back up so you can kind of see in comparison to my hands what this is like. Um, I don't know if this is going to help. This is like an iPhone 7. So you can kind of get an idea as to the size of these. I'm always someone who prefers like the mini versions of things if I can get them. But not always, to be honest, because when it comes to writing, I sometimes think like one of the notebooks I have at work is A4, which I never thought I'd go, I'd be an A4 person, but... It's just so much easier to take quick notes when I'm in like rush meetings. So I'm just going to take this sleeve or this little label thing out. Uh, sticky tape, let's just, yep, do that. So as you can see at the front, there's like this little pouch which you could put receipts in a paper. It is quite soft. I don't think this is real leather. I think this is more plastic, but it is quite soft and malleable. So don't know if I... I think you could, you could, yeah, oh, there you go, you could fit your phone. I don't know if this indent, indentation would stay there if you left something in there long term. Personally, I'm not sure I'd put stuff in here that was super important. i am probably put all my notes or um, in Japanese class we get handouts. I'd probably put them in there. Um, just somewhere easy where I wouldn't lose it straight away, but like I wouldn't be devastated if I lost it either. So when you open it up, you have three card holders and then you can store stuff here as well. And then let's get right into the flip through. I'm just going to try try to zoom you guys in as much as I can. When I view this through a little viewfinder at the top as I'm filming it. And everything looks really small. So I'm just hoping that it translates better into the camera. But I will bring the journal up if I need to get you guys a closer view. It's a little bit of like a table of contents. You kind of see all the sections that this journal contains. So that's a good overview. So this is just more of a suggestion on how you could use the weekly view. I've seen on Instagram lots of different ways people use it. Also on Facebook, there's a Facebook group that I follow. So it's really up to you. But there is a lot of detail that goes into the weekly view. So I'll go into it a little bit more so you can have a closer view. So this is your three-year view. You've got this year, 2019, next year, 2020, which is the year that this journal was made for. And then the following year, 2021. I will say, if you're curious, the paper is quite thin. It reminds me of Hobonichi Techos. Like, to me, they're like cousins, even though I know they're not related. But the paper is similar. I don't think it's exactly the same, but it's very similar. Well, it could be the same. I don't know. I could have to ask Violet. She's much more of a paper connoisseur than me. But they're very similar in my mind. And this is the full year view, which I really love full year views. I just love seeing everything at once. I'm not somebody who loves to just see like little portions of everything. And you have the days there, um, all in kanji. So obviously a lot of this journal is going to be in Japanese, um, which is great if you're learning Japanese like me. <laughs> and then we have an age chart. These are all separated into eras. So in Japan, the emperor or, or the family of the emperor will reign for a certain era and then when it switches over which it did this year i think in may um reika or something era um so that's what how these are chunked up so you kind of know which era you were born in again it's very very specific to 
Japan and the people living there because in Australia we have no concept of era at all. <laughs> so yeah, you can jot down any dreams that you have. And here is a money plan, so good for budgeting. I personally prefer to budget on an Excel spreadsheet because I like all the formulas you can create, but if you're more of a tactile person, this might be good for you. So the top section here is all for like fixed expenses, and then this is what they call flow expenses. So I think they're like variables, so like food and all that sort of stuff. Um, and then down here you can list your income and then you can kind of tally up the difference and then you can see if you're like positive or negative for the month. This is a map of Japan and I think these little dots are all the cities of each prefectures. There we go. So these are all the different prefectures and the capital city of each of the prefectures. So I guess you could mark this down um, if you were trying to do your geography or if you were traveling quite extensively in Japan. And then this is just an example of the weekly view. This is not an actual dated weekly view, so I'm actually a little confused as to why this particular one is here. And if my Japanese was better, I could probably explain it to you, but let's just move on. So the next one is around favorite phrases or quotes that you may come across. Recommendation list. I guess this is just really anything. So it could be restaurants or I don't know, anything, I guess. Uh, these pages are so thin, sometimes I skip them by accident without realizing it. So this is a book list, books that you've read and then how you would rate them. And then next is a movie list. Same concept, what they are and how you'd rate them. If you are a big movie buff, gifts received and gifts given. I've noticed that the whole gift tracking thing is quite common in some of the Japanese planners. Um, I don't know if people in the Western world, like in Australia, they do that. I personally don't because, as I mentioned in a previous video, I don't really do gift giving very much in my own personal life. Um, in my family, we tend to just give cash or we just treat each other to meals. Um, yeah, kind of boring. So this is a promise list. Um, what it translates to is, it says yakusoku. You can put appointments in here if you want. Um, it's just anything, just kind of like a, an ability to track things that you have to do. Either your meetings with people, yeah, so there's like a couple pages. I'm not sure why this one's blank. I think this may be just for anything you want to put in there. And then we have, mm, and then we have like the monthly or bi-monthly view, so two months. You've got November, December for 2019, and then we go over to 2020. I guess you could mark down any major events or monthly occurrences that you think are important to call out here. I don't think I would personally use this one too much yet, but... I do surprise myself, sometimes I think I won't use something and end up using it extensively when it comes to actually using it. So here we have the monthly view, this is November, so let's just flip over to January, I just feel like it's a little more applicable. And so here, how it is, let's see if I can bring it up a little bit so it's a bit clearer, hopefully my autofocus will cooperate with me. Okay, maybe not. Alright, what I'll do is I'm just going to zoom you guys in so it's a little bit clearer. So you've got the days in the top, you've got the kanji at the top as well, which um, just represents the days, the dates, and you can say whether it was a good happy day. I guess you've got your mini mood trackers here. The kanji on the side here talks about whether it is a lucky day or a bad luck day. Quite a common concept, I think, in Asian culture. I, I don't know if it's the case for most cultures, but I do know that in Japanese and I think Indian culture, I'm not really sure. Um, you do have, you do classify certain days as being lucky and unlucky or just meh and those are more for if you want to plan big events so if you want to get married for example you'd probably want to put that on what we call on what I think they call it so example if you want to get married then I assume you'd want to plan it on an auspicious day a lucky day as opposed to a bad luck day just to give the marriage the best chance so if you believe in that sort of stuff this is really useful I do notice this comes up quite a bit in some Japanese planners but not all of them so I don't know if it's like a whole very strongly followed concept. I know a lot of my friends um, don't believe in it, but I don't know whether they don't do because like they still plan weddings according to this, even though they outwardly say they don't believe in it. So maybe if it's a big event like a wedding, then why take the risk, I suppose? Um, and so the monthly view just keeps going on. You've got a massive to-do list on the back, on the back, on the side here. So any major monthly things that you need to keep track of as well as it continues on down the bottom if you need more space. So that's your entire month. Let's flip through to the weekly view right here. Okay, here we are. I fell in love with the Hobonichi weekly views, but I think this is like the weekly view for Hobonichi, but on steroids. Um, 
So, oh man, I really hope you guys can see. I want to bring it up closer, but I don't know if the autofocus is going to... Uh, there we go. Got my autofocus working. Um, so, on the side here, you have your... Uh, because it's a crossover month, so you've got both months, but most months that don't cross over will only have one month, as you can see there. And then you have your weekly general to-do list right on the side. And then we'll just go through one day first. So you've got like... Um, I think this is the moon, like it's a full moon. And then you can track down the weather for the day, any extra little notes. And then on the side here, you start to have the timeline. So I think they're assuming at this point, you're probably sleeping um, or it's like not a crucial time because you'll probably be at home chilling out. I will definitely be sleeping right now, um, probably. Actually, this is quite accurate for me because when it starts to go white is when I would actually wake up and go to work. And so you notice you get a little bit more space here until you get into the evening. So the evening you still have a lot of space, but I think they recognize that this is probably when most people will clock off work and they'll be at home or doing personal things at this point. So I find it interesting that that's how they colorize it. Um, because I don't think this reflects how a lot of people work, at least personally, especially if you, especially if you do a lot of shift work or you happen to work quite long hours. Like I know plenty of people who definitely don't stop working at five and go well into the evening every single day as their normal full-time job. So I guess that's a bit assumptive. That's one thing I'm probably a bit like, eh, but it doesn't really change. Like because the size is still the same, it doesn't really matter. Then if you go to the bottom, you have a little bit more space to scribble, do notes for the day. You can do a little bit of a mood tracker here. And then you can write down when the sun rose and the sun set for the day. I'm not really sure what the star is for. Um, something to do with night but I don't know what I would record about the night so that is essentially the entire weekly view um, it is very prescriptive it's very rigid in how you work but if you like this sort of format then actually it is perfect for you and so I have had I have tried to use this format I have found it really like the one thing that I have found very difficult is filling out all these extra things here like the weather and how I feel and the sunrise and sunset like I'm someone who has a bit of a like need to complete things if it's there and I found that I would skip it for several days because I would just forget and then if I wasn't keeping up with it I just felt what was the point of even using the journal so that was my attitude two years ago when I was using Jibon I don't know if I've changed maybe maybe not I guess we'll see when I start trying to use this journal again but then for a lot of this, it's like, if I'm not at work, I don't really need to be scheduling things down to the time. So I prefer a bit of flexibility around that. I prefer having a bit of a, like, freedom to scribble. So this would be my freedom to scribble, which is very limited. Or just having a place to write lots of to-dos. And those to-dos are not very time-dependent. So, yeah, it'll be interesting. I can see some restrictions in it for myself, but I also can see some restrictions that I think will actually benefit me and my ways of working. So that's essentially the weekly view. It goes on for the entire year, no surprise. Also, if you notice, they do have the months on the edges here. So if you ever just needed to flip through the month, you have the colors already on the side here, which is very useful. So we'll go down to December. Just skipped ahead there. Okay, so that's January for 2021. If we skip through, you've got some blank graph paper and then you have a reflection page. So for each month, you can reflect back and just write down thoughts and then you have Tokyo route map I don't know how often this thing changes like the rail lines so I wonder how relevant it would be throughout the year if it changes often I assume it doesn't change that often you've got Osaka, Kyoto, Nagoya, Sendai, off. Oh, you've pretty much got all of them Yokohama this is really useful world time differences this would have been really useful before we had mobile phones, for sure. Now I just look at the world clock and it just tells you instantly and it updates according to time zones. I'm not time zones, sorry, daylight savings and stuff like that. But it's still kind of cool just to see it all like laid out. And then here you just write all your personal data in case I think if anyone finds a journal, then they can return it to you and learn a whole lot more about you as well. And that is pretty much it. So that is the entire Jibun Techo. Um, you do have a little pocket here which you could put well, actually, you have two pockets. You have one here, but then you have, like, a little slit here that you could put a card. And then your pen back here. And that is pretty much the entire journal. So, yeah. I expect... I went through the little one. It is pretty much exactly the same. Just 
miniaturized. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching. This is Selena reporting from my room. Back to the internet.